February 17th, 2022. I will turn the meeting over to our zoning administrator. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals is now in session for its regularly scheduled meeting of February the 17th, 2022. I'm Joey Hargis, and I'll be presenting the cases for review in today's public hearing. Would ask the board to ask if you've got cell phone on you, if you'll put it on silent or vibrate so as not to interrupt today's proceedings. We would appreciate it. The procedure will be to introduce the case record as the codes department has it, and I'll do that on the wall here by means of a PowerPoint presentation. I'll present any letters we've received in support or opposition to the cases on today's public hearings. Um, at the conclusion of my presentation, the applicants will come first to the table, along with any persons in support. And then after the applicant gives their testimony, the opposition will come forward and present their uh, a testimony to the board. After the opposition's presented their testimony, the applicant does have a period for rebuttal. The board and their rules provide for cases without opposition that applicants have five minutes to present their case. In cases with opposition, the board provides 10 minutes for each side of a case to present their testimony. Again, that 10 minutes is uh, not per speaker, but per person, I mean, but per side of the case. So if you have multiple speakers, uh, if you'll divide up your time before coming up to the board, uh, coming up to the table and making your presentation. All section numbers that I refer to today come directly from the Metropolitan Zoning Code, which was adopted by the Metro Council and became effective January 1st, 1998. I'm introduced and make a part of the record, the, zone, the entire zoning code, a copy of which is kept at my desk, and I'll dispense from reading individual sections unless the applicant or opposition requests that I read them. Zoning code requires that these proceedings be taped. Therefore, it's imperative anyone wishing to address the board come forward uh, have a seat at the table. There's a button just to the right of the microphone stand. Push that button one time. Uh, the light will turn red on your microphone, as mine is, around the uh, mouthpiece. Uh, present, identify yourself and make your presentation. When you're done, if you would, please push that button one time to turn it off. I'll go through all cases set for today's public hearing. And after each case, uh, the board will discuss and vote on the cases in, fr in front of you. The board is vested with the power to act on cases as set forth in section 1740-180 of the Metro Code of Law. The code requires that four members of the seven-member board be present to constitute a quorum. I do have all seven members present today. You'll need four affirmative votes to grant your application. Uh, in the event uh, we have a tie vote, uh, a vote of uh, three to three by chance, one of the members doesn't participate, that case will stay on our agenda for the next 30 days. The members who or eligible who participated in the prior case can uh, change their vote should they wish to. Uh, the member who did not participate or wasn't present can watch the proceedings and become eligible to participate at the next hearing. The applicant or any agreed property owner may request a rehearing within 60 days of today's public hearing. Uh, the applicant or any agreed property owner may appeal this board's decision to Chantry or Circuit Court within the same 60 day period, but once 60 days has elapsed, this board's decision is final. It is, uh, if you're an applicant and your case is granted today, it is necessary for you to obtain the permit for which you've applied. <clears throat> you have two years from today's date uh, to obtain such permit for your uh, case to be, uh, for your uh, variance to be activated. Mr. Chairman, I submit that all cases were filed in proper order. All appellants were notified by certified mails required by the zoning code and all affected property owners um, were notified uh, as required by the code. Before we begin, the board does allow elected officials to address this board uh, should they wish to. Are there any elected officials present with us today who'd wish to address the board? Mr. Chairman, I see none. <clears throat> Got a couple preliminary announcements The on today's agenda. On page two of our agenda, case 2022-19, Suburban Cowboys, LLC, owner of the properties at 3982 and 3978 Taylor Road, uh, requesting an IMA appeal. This case has been deferred uh, by agreement between staff and the applicant to March 3rd, which is our next hearing. And that case has been uh, postponed, will not be heard today. So if you're here for case 19, that case will be heard on March the 3rd at one o'clock here in this room. 
So that's the only preliminary announcement I have regarding today's cases. Um, the board does have a consent agenda, and prior to uh, this hearing, the chairman reviews the cases, and if in their opinion uh, the cases have met the criteria for the application they've requested and they feel that testimony would not alter the material facts, they recommend the case to the remainder of the board for approval. I'm going to call the cases recommended for consent agenda, and if you're here in opposition to the cases I call an only opposition, please raise your hand, and I'll uh, acknowledge you, and we'll hear that case in its regular order. <clears throat> the uh, first case recommended for consent agenda is case 2022-21. Tori Alexander, the appellant and owner of the property at 4309 Estes, Road requesting a variance from street setback requirements in RS-20 to construct an addition to the residence. Are there any parties here opposed to case 21? Mr. Chairman, I see none. The uh, next case recommended for consent is case 2022-22, Bootstrap Architecture, Ryan and Amy Taylor, owners of the property at 4003 Hudson Avenue, requesting a variance in side street setbacks in RS-15. Are there any parties present to case 22 on 4003 Hudson in opposition? Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing none. Those are the two cases recommended for your consent agenda. All right, we have two cases recommended for consent. Is there a second? Have a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of that motion, say aye, raise your hand. Any opposed? Those two cases uh, pass. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that, um, that takes care of our consent agenda. If you're here for cases 22 and 23, one, uh, your cases have been granted. You are free to go. You're also free to hang out with us if you like to. Uh, be sure to follow up with the coach department beginning on Monday regarding your permits for which you've applied. Uh, and with that, that concludes the consent agenda. Okay, Mr. Chairman. The um, first case we have on our agenda today is a case that was tied up on votes. <clears throat> Forgive me, um, on the February 3rd hearing. I'll go through uh, the, the orders as written, uh, the, the order of events currently. The, uh, there was a motion made to uphold the zoning administrator's revocation of a permit, 2019-74327, uh, regarding a digital billboard that has been erected at 610 South 2nd Street. The motion was made... Um, the... Uh, believe yes I, yes it was I'm sorry mr. lawless I sat here and I've wrote your name and I for some reason can't get it out uh, mr. lawless you you made the motion um, and I have a, a second uh, here I'm sorry miss Davis made the motion my apologies the second was mr. lawless uh, miss Davis I apologize I sit here and wrote David's name and I sorry typo on my end uh, and mr. pepper voted for the uh, motion to uh, revoke the the permit. Uh, th those in opposition to the permit were Mr. Newton, Ms. Carpenter, Mr. Taylor. Uh, do any of the members that have participated in that case uh, wish to change their vote at this time? No, sir. I do wish to change my vote. Let me explain for the record that um, I thought that was probably one of the closest cases that we had heard. And when I left here, I did a lot of thinking and rethinking about it, and I realized that in my analysis, uh, I believe the tie should go to the zoning administrator because I think it is ambiguous, and I, um, I thought it was a really co close case. I thought it about a lot, and I realized I totally forgot a really important principle of law, which is if there is an ambiguity, it ought to be construed to uphold the rights of the property owner, and I don't, I think in my analysis that the tie should go to um, the zoning administrator, I just, um, I think I got it wrong, and therefore I will change my vote to vote in favor of the application. Ms. Pepper, um, I'll, I'll, I'll note that the record reflects that you changed your vote to uphold the zoning administrator to switch to uh, overturning the zoning administrator's interpretation. Right. Is that correct? Uh, members, for the record, I had received an email uh, yesterday from the um, Sports Authority, uh, who controls the property across um, Korean Veterans Bridge, where the Titan Stadium is located, um, as I advised the, the folks at the Sports Authority, that, that information came after this hearing and after the 
the public hearing was closed. Um, I cannot enter into the record that email and I advise them as such, but should this board wish to consider uh, information to that effect, you would need to open the public hearing uh, to allow us to accept that into the record, give the opposing counsel a chance to review it, and at the next hearing on 3-3 uh, is when discussion of that uh, would have to occur if that is, uh, is the uh, will of the board, if it's not the will of the board, but I did want to advise you at least have that. Well, uh, and, and Joey, I, it's my understanding that, I mean, um, if Mr. Pepper changes his vote, then it's not held up in votes, but it also means that the motion did not pass, and there's not a motion uh, on the table to uh, overturn the zoning administrator. So That's to, correct. So to me, uh, just changing your vote doesn't change the outcome. And if there's going to be a motion to um, overturn the administrator, I do believe it probably is important to hear information which we um, which we we didn't have. Um, but that's up to this board. And I'm going to make a motion we reopen and have that. I'll second that. There's a motion to, and so to reopen the public hearing. And Joey, would that be to hear this? Uh, now, or you said you said three three. No, sir. Um, under our rules, to end, and also to to be fair and equitable to the opposing uh, to the the appellant in this case, this board does not need to consider anything um, today. I will enter this this information received from the sports authority into the record. I'll give opposing counsel a copy of it, and then on three three, this board will discuss uh, the public hearing only for the. I mean, if you're open to the public hearing just to discuss. This information, that's fine. Okay, uh, but and we'll so, and just so, 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 and there's a motion for that. There's a second. Um, is there any discussion on that motion to reopen the public hearing on March third? Okay, I'll, then I will take a vote. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Any opposed? One opposed. So we will reopen the public hearing on March third, and. The and, and I know Mr. Cole hasn't had a chance to review the case. If you have a chance to review the case by the third, then you can participate. We are just reopening the public hearing. We're not hearing the case again. That's correct. Yeah, and I actually and, thank you for covering that. I was I was going to cover um, that situation as well. And so and, and and if there was a motion to open up the, I mean, well, again, that just depends on, and 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 that's your your prerogative one way or the other, but I will not be participating on the third. So it'll be up to the rest of the group um, on the third to figure that out. But that's what we have decided to do and that's done. Sure. Mr. Chairman, for clarity for all parties, uh, where we stand today, Mr. Cole, um, I will not poll you today, but um, you do have an opportunity to watch the record up to this point, including what you've heard today. And, and at that meeting, I will ask you at the beginning, it, have you watched it? Yes, no. And if you have, do you wish to participate? Yes, no. And then we'll proceed with the, the public hearing portion, which the board's open uh, with that. So that will be in Mr. Taylor, uh, Chairman Taylor, you're right. This is your last meeting. So um, the record will reflect that you will roll off this board. So you will not be entered on any order in this case for the board uh, as this motion has failed uh, for, for failure to obtain uh, four votes. So. Uh, current lay of the land. There's no motion on the table. The public hearing is open March 3, um, and then we'll, we'll proceed then. But uh, opposing counsel is present. To be fair, I, it's, not, it's not fair to ask him to, to address this today. So he and I will discuss. I'll get him the information. I'll get you guys the information, uh, put this information in the record, and we'll hear this case on March 3rd. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chairman, um, before we begin today's uh, meeting, I would like to take a point of uh, privilege, if I could, as your zoning administrator. Uh, today is your last meeting, um, and so first I want to thank you for your service to the city. Uh, as as uh, folks on TV or folks present may not know, Mr. Taylor has served more than 10 years on this board. Um, just a little bit. You you completed the uh, partial term of uh, former councilman uh, Fabian Bedney. Uh, when he was elected to council, he had to leave this board, and David... Um, was asked by the mayor at the time and, and, and graciously, graciously accepted to serve on this board. And this board is not an easy board to serve on. It is time-consuming. 
Um, so first, I, I want to thank you for your service. I was here for a lot for the large portion of your first term uh, before my departure, and then coming back, you were here. So again, uh, from from my standpoint, the Coast Department, we thank you for your service. Uh, I personally thank you because you've been a good friend to me, uh, and I'd like to present to you, if I could. Uh, a gavel. Oh, wow. Oh, isn't that exciting? Thank you. <laughs> oh, appreciate it. May I speak? I'll, I'll, I'll just use this at home. Yeah, <laughs> feel free to <laughs> use that at home and in your uh, business <laughs> career. Would you uh, mind, Chairman, if I added a few absolutely. words? Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to thank you um, for your, I've known you for seven years. It's been a great ride we've had together. And I wanted to thank you for your thoughtfulness and your creativity and your humor and also using that gavel. You've done it so well. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Much thank appreciated. You so much. Yeah, and I mean, it, you know, it, it, it is a, uh, it's kind of bittersweet. I mean, 10 years goes by very quickly. And, you know, I, I think a lot of folks, you know, if you're watching on TV or you're in the audience or even, even when you're asked to serve on this board, or any board of the city, uh, to me the first question is, well, how did all that come about and what do they do? And I didn't really know much about the, the BZA, but I had been, as a business person, I had been through uh, through the codes process and 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 I felt like it, maybe the mayor dean felt like that was uh, a, a skill or a, an experience that might have some diversity or, or needed on the board, who knows? And they may have asked uh, enough folks that said no till they found me who, who, who finally agreed. But it, is, it has been a real uh, joy and honor. I was talking with Joey. Joey has been in that, he was in that chair when we started as a member of the code staff and secretary of our board, and now he's in the same chair as the zoning administrator. And uh, we're kind of leaving it, I'm leaving it like I found it, and I, I don't think we've aged much. And at least he disagreed with me, but I think that may have been on, on me. He said it was him. But, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, know, I, I know my beard's a lot grayer. Um, but, you know, 250 meetings, 3,000 some odd cases. Um, there have been 15 board members um, that I've served with, three zoning administrators. And, you know, everybody that's on this board and any board in the city volunteers their time. They're asked to, to serve by the mayor and the, are appointed by the council and they serve for a certain number of years depending upon the board. And, you know, every board member I've had the, you know, pleasure of serving with, and, and it's really been a pleasure with, to serve with everybody has taken the role seriously and, you know, done their best to, to make a good decision based on the information they have. And uh, I really appreciate that. And, you know, people don't always seem my point of view. And I've said before, that's why there's seven of us instead of one. Uh, it's nice to have a, a different perspectives. And sometimes we don't see uh, the case the exact same way. But I know that everybody, uh, if they choose a different path than me is doing it thoughtfully and or and and with respect to the metro code and and the case at hand and and that's been really nice is this has never been in my opinion a political or a, a personality based board it's always you know, there's a lot of been there've been a lot of personalities on this board that have been a lot of fun to be with but it's always been a board that people take seriously and do their very best to do the right thing for the city and i, I really appreciate that and it's been a real honored to serve on it. I, I appreciate that uh, being asked and, and Mayor's uh, Dean and Barry allowing me to serve and the council for uh, approving me the first time. They didn't know me, but they did know me the second time. So I guess I'm uh, more grateful the, for the second go around than the first. Anyway, so thank you. And thank you for this. <laughs> Thanks again, Mr. Chairman, uh, again for your service, and that's uh, very well deserved. I, I apologize I couldn't get you a gold one, but uh, oh, that's, that's all good. <laughs> it wasn't the it was yeah. not in the budget. That's correct, Mr. Wall. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to have any of that invested toward you having more staff and resources. Since you're, I know your building permits are up like 30 percent again this year, and this it's a lot. This, I know that you guys have a lot on your plate. We do. Thank you. You're kind to say that. And, uh, with that, we'll transition into our first case today. Our first case on uh, Mr. Taylor's last agenda is 2022-13, uh, David Purser, the appellant, Nashville Chin Baptist Church, the owner of the properties at 5738 Cane Ridge Road, requesting a variance from the uh, sidewalk requirements in the AR2A district. The appellant is uh, constructing a new church on the property and is requesting to 
not build or contribute the, to the in lieu of fund. Referred to the board under section 1720, 120, the appellant has alleged the board would have jurisdiction under section 1740, 180. I, the appellants are present. Okay, if you'll come forward, sir, are there any parties present in opposition to this case? Mr. Chairman, seeing none. Um, Mr. Purser, you'll have five minutes. I'll go through my presentation first and, and set up the case for you, and then I'll turn it over to you to present. The um, subject property is located, uh, as you see here, on the, the parcel in red along the east side of Cane Ridge Road. It is in the AR2A district, and members, you, you do hear a lot of, at least in years past, new church cases. Uh, churches are permitted use in AR2A and don't have to come to the board for approval. Um, the nature of this request comes through, uh, due to the construction of this, of this new facility, the sidewalk requirements under the zoning code were triggered. Uh, the applicant filed a sidewalk waiver with the Coach Department and the Sidewalk Waiver Committee. The Sidewalk Waiver Committee recommended um, to, uh, to me, and ultimately my decision was that, that sidewalks should not be built here, but they should contribute to the in lieu of fund. Um, the applicant's original request to do, was to do neither. Uh, due to some topographic issues on the property. Um, this is the uh, subject property of the aerial photograph. And the, and the cause of even being required sidewalks was the sidewalks installed along Cane Ridge Road as part of this uh, development to the north here. So the, the construction of this neighborhood to the north, uh, sidewalks were built throughout and turned out on Cane Ridge Road here and here, and that is what's triggering the sidewalk requirement for this proposed use. So if the if that those houses hadn't been built across the way, no sidewalks would be required at all. Okay. And they don't. And the church doesn't own the land next. Is that right? That's correct. There's a small strip of land um, that runs parallel with the north property boundary. Um, back in my practice years, sometimes that's called a spite strip, but it's a it's a thin strip of land that runs. Uh, parallel to the development's property that, that the Homeowners Association maintains, and that uh, is where the sidewalk um, turns out onto Cane Ridge is there, and then again on the north side of that. So will it's you like point on the, on the pointer, will you show the board just exactly what we're talking about, what the request is for? It's it is. There's a, the request would be to, um, uh, to, to not build or pay in lieu of along their entire frontage of property. They do have an area uh, with some rock outcropping in this area that's in yellow uh, and some topographic hardship, which we in the committee felt, okay, that, that seems to be a, a reasonable uh, waiver of the sidewalk or payment request in that area. But we felt, given the topography of the land along here, that um, if construction did not occur, then, then payment in lieu should occur there. And I'll, I'll show you some photographs of that. Uh, area. Uh, as you can see in the photographs, it's a little dated, uh, a little while back when we took these photographs uh, upon my visit. But this is the view along Cane Ridge Road. Uh, the upper photograph is to the east or to the southeast of the of the um, site plan which you looked at. And then this view is looking north toward that development um, there. Can I believe? And, and you know, when, when you and I were talking about this case, it, it we were looking at the plan. Yeah, the planning department has two recommendations: one from 2019 and one from uh, this year. And the one from 2019, we'd looked and it said maintain existing sidewalks. But I think they were. T it it says that there's a four foot grass strip and five foot sidewalk along Cane Springs Road, which is the long side. Is that right? That's correct. And then there's no sidewalk on Cane Ridge Road, and their recommendation in 2019 was for them to maintain the existing sidewalks on Cane Springs and dedicate the right-of-way. And since then, planning has reversed that to say they shall contribute the in lieu for the Cane Ridge side. That's correct. I think so, they were mistaken in the 19, believing that that property belonged to the church. Uh, but it, yeah, but even though it didn't, the property didn't belong to them, there were sidewalks where they said there were sidewalks, but yes, they, they just thought that that belonged to the property. That's right. But the, the, the physical state of the property hasn't changed between the two. No, sir, it has Okay. Not. All right, I'm, I'm sorry. I just wanted to, to me, it's a little confusing. I just wanted to make sure that we all had the same, yeah. same thoughts on this. Yes, sir. 
And with that, that I'll turn work. it over to the appellant. Um, sir, you have five minutes to present your testimony. I'll keep the time over here. I'll let you know. You've got a minute or so left. Hi, my name is Dave Purser with Purser Architecture and Design um, at 2819 Columbine Place, Suite 5 in Nashville. And I'm the architect and representing uh, client for National Chin Baptist Church. And we've been in design on this for several years, and we did come before the board um, back in 2019 and I believe had a unanimous approval um, for exactly the same thing that we're asking for today. Um, and so, of course, that has expired, and I recognize that policies change and people change their minds, and they're new members of the board, but we're, we're here, uh, again, to sort of ask you basically for an extension and for the same um, agreement um, and variance. And I, I didn't understand that there was um, a misunderstanding on the 2019. I'm still, I may be a little confused on that. Um, in terms of what's existing there um, on the north side of the property, I believe there are sidewalks on both sides of Cane Springs Road. Um, I think the confusion was that there's a strip of green just that belo doesn't belong to the church and that because it's a different owner, I, I don't know. But did, do you all maintain all of that? Do you, when, when they mow the yard, do they mow that piece too? I don't know. Do you guys maintain the strip that's uh, along Cane Springs Road? Probably not, if it's not theirs. Um, and so I, I didn't know. I, I guess there's a maintenance. Is that what part of the issue is that there was a... I don't, I don't know. A, I, I, no, there was no... My well, understanding was it, was it was mainly about dedication of the right-of-way uh, in lieu of, in, it, rather than paying to the in lieu of fee, and I think that was the agreement, um, the main point of the agreement. If there's a maintenance issue, then um, I'm uh, misinformed on that one. But um, materially, that it has not changed. I, I, I was kind of, I understand there was a new policy put in place, so we went through those steps to go through, and uh, we were denied, and I was kind of actually surprised that we were denied the sidewalk waiver. Um, because we had had this uh, approval, and so um, I didn't really understand why planning was changing their mind and their recommendation when they had previously recommended that this was an acceptable um, agreement. And, and I have some of that in front of me and, and have entered that into the record, I believe, and some photos that do show the outcropping. But I guess, um, you know, we are here to, to ask for some relief for this non-for-profit, this group that is you know, providing community services and benefits above what, you know, maybe a developer or other uh, for-profit entity would be. So I guess um, that's kind of what we're asking of the board, right? Of course, our, our preference would be that, that we get the same agreement that was um, granted in 2019 from that case. And, and if that's not, you know, if that's no longer on the table or, you know, is there something else that we could could do um, for relief? Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I was looking up that case and it was 2019-33. This was before, I think, the before the Sidewalk Waiver Committee came into being. Uh, and this was the applicant's request to uh, construct the church without the required sidewalk. This board granted it, uh, looks like five and zero with, with you and Ms. Chapel as the um, as the member, there's the membership who participated in that case. <laughs> I apologize, I didn't, I, I missed that in my case prep that, that this had come before this body. Uh, okay, once thank before. you. So Any the, questions? Yeah, if, you, if it's okay. Um, so the request is to not build on Cane Ridge and maintain the existing on Cane Ridge. The longer, I don't remember. Cane Springs. Or, Cane Springs. Yeah. Is that the request? The, well, the Cane Springs um, is uh, actually nothing to do with these folks. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it okay. won't, it, it, there's no involvement of that sidewalk area uh, in, in that original, that 2019 request or this request. There's there's nothing on, it's just along Cane Ridge, which uh, looking back through this, it appears this board granted them a full variance uh, from payment or construction in 2019. As many of these cases have with, with COVID, you know, the, the time, you're going to start seeing some cases that you guys had approved as a board in 2019, 2020. 
uh, sort of recycling back through this board over the because next few the months. order expired yes it's been more than two years okay any other any other questions did you have anything else said I so. okay all right well seeing no questions we will close public hearing and thoughts I mean yeah I, I I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing a hardship for portions of it I, I, I do understand that there is a change in you know I, I, I you know I, I feel like the city should honor in so, to some degree what that agreement was 2019 I mean Obviously, COVID's provided a hardship for everybody. Um, I don't know if, if maybe um, a, a compromise could be to, you know, extend the existing sidewalk to the uh, entry drive for the church. I think that, you know, that's like 20, 30 feet of sidewalk. That way, you don't have a sidewalk to nowhere, and that could be a good comp compromise point. Um, I had a similar thought. Okay. Would you mind if we open the public hearing to see if that... Did you... The thought was that the, that as part of the uh, project, they would build, wrap the sidewalk around the corner, and then just take it to the driveway. Um, does that present, to your knowledge, any significant so, hardships or so issues? So I, I think that um, I'll speak on behalf. Of, I believe that is a reasonable request and, and, a, and a reasonable um, agreement and solution, and I believe that provides a good bit of relief. Um, it, the hardship is not in that area, right? It's, it's relatively flat. There is, of course, you know, um, some storm water incurred, but I, I think, um, I, I believe, and okay. I would ask my clients maybe to weigh in, but I, I believe that's a reasonable request. And okay. All right. Then we will close the public hearing. Is that? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion for that. Uh, I don't know how I put that necessarily into a motion. Um, I guess we would be upholding the zoning mist is this a side of yeah I, th I think that we okay. grant the variance okay. for the sidewalk yes. from the driveway uh, to the property line that I don't know what direction is that Joey the west me yeah. that'd be to the north to the north and that the sidewalk uh, be continued from the existing cane Ridge sidewalk to, around the corner to cane Springs to their driveway yeah that, that'd, that'd be my motion that, there. That's what you want, right? <laughs> that's what I want. All right. That's what I'm trying to get to. You, do you want to second your... I'll second your motion. I said if I'm able to. I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have a motion. I have a second. Is there any other discussion? Uh, then I'll, And then, again, with the variance, meaning there's no requirement to pay or to bill mm -hmm. for the rest of for the, the remainder frontage, of the frontage yeah. including the driveway. Yeah. Uh, there's a motion. There's a second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank okay, you. Okay, that case is approved with the conditions as stated, seven and zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Our next case, case two thousand twenty-two dash fifteen. Uh, Mr. James Carroll is the appellant. Uh, Charles and Margaret Den. Uh, Devier is the owners of the property at 5101 Illinois Avenue requesting variances from rear setback and the parking requirements in CS District to construct an addition uh, to an existing restaurant. Are the appellants present? Yeah, they're coming forward. Are there any parties uh, present in opposition to this case? Okay, Mr. Chairman, seeing none. Uh, gentlemen, you saw the last case. Uh, I'll, I'll go through the slides and, and um, talk about the case and then I'll turn it over to you all. You'll have five minutes to present your case to the board. The subject property is located on the west margin of Illinois, uh, south margin of Illinois Avenue, on the west side of 51st Avenue North. That's the property seen in red. This is an aerial photograph of the subject property, the existing conditions of the lot. I'll note on this aerial photograph, you'll, you'll notice, and this will come up in just a moment, uh, most of this property's parking lot, existing parking lot, is actually in the city's right of way. This is a site plan submitted uh, by the appellants uh, in this case, and um, you see here the, the parking requirements, and I'll go over those uh, briefly here in just a moment, but the, the large swath, if you can see the um, dashed line that runs where my uh, highlight pointer is, straight north, 
all of that parking, the handicap stalls, these four spaces here, uh, this um, stormwater um, it is located within city right of way. Have, are you able to do a stormwater in the city right of way? Yes, with with stormwater's approval and and yes, sir. There's there's the ability to do that uh, from time to time. It's not often. Um, this area, if you recall, uh, especially your tenure here, there are a lot of uh, properties with m massive right of ways out here right. in the nation's area, uh, where you know there's there's 40, 50 feet of people's front yards which are actually city right of way because at the time there was there, the proposal for that neighborhood was to build streetcars through that would service the downtown area and obviously technology changed much faster than construction, but those right of ways ne were never abandoned. Uh, this may be one of those instances. Oh, where where that has occurred, uh, but looking at the uh, end of the subject property from 51st here, um, currently are some angled parking spaces where this this car is located. Um, looking into the subject site and then views in the upper left. This is approximately the location of the city's right of way, and then those those spots are located here. Uh, this proposal, and I'll flip back just for a moment. Uh, last photograph, the rear setback is along the southern property line, but back to the site plan. Uh, this is based off two uses that are out here. Uh, the proposed use is being um, uh, restaurant use here uh, with retail use and storage located on the south. Under the zoning code, the shorter lot line uh, for purposes of determining a rear setback sets forth that the rear should be opposite the shortest street line. So the zoning code does give me some flexibility to flip that. I felt in this instance that this makes the most sense to be the rear. The subject property just immediately west of this is also zone CS, um, which in CS zoning, there is no side setback. So rather than create a large variance along the entire length of this frontage for an existing condition, I deem this southern property line to be the rear setback. The current rear area is, is clear from, uh, from any existing structures that are here. Uh, I did have a discussion with the applicant uh, regarding the use of restaurant. Uh, the original plan I looked at looked more barred to me which would affect the overall parking count um, somewhat uh, in this case as we're in the EZO and there's no parking breaks for that. They've, they've made assurances to me and I, I, I told them that maybe something they want to address with you guys too, that this is, this is indeed restaurant use. And then a retail use that's located here. The retail portion of this use is under 2,000 square feet and under the EZO and in the, in, under the zoning code inside the EZO, there's no parking required for retail uses less than 2,000 square feet. Uh, so there's no parking required for that. So the six that come about are based upon the additional uh, restaurant square footage that's being added to this. Um, I will ask the applicant before we get in testimony, in some of the uh, exhibits she showed was a, a grass seating area in this area. Is that still the intent? Uh, if so, we, we would count that as a needed parking requirement, even though it's not under a structure but any kind of outdoor seating historically under this zoning code, we've counted those seating areas. So if you don't mind during your part, if you'll clarify if that's, yeah, we, we are going to have some seating or not, it may change your overall required parking numbers, and I can update this slide to do that. But based upon what I've seen under roof in the building uh, and applying all applicable uh, deductions, we have six required. They're providing two, and I say two, that are these two spaces here are the only ones that I can actually count because they are not in the city right away. So they're not, they're, they're on the private property. They're not in the right of way. So under the code, these are the only two in my highlighter that I can actually count physically. Yes, there are, are parking stalls out here and you'll see in the photographs too. Um, so there, there are four in the right of way. Yes, sir. That's correct. And then the, uh, 51st currently has some bike lane. Uh, as you see here in this area, some protected um, two-way bike lanes in, in this strip, the existing sidewalk, the grass strip. So there's there's quite a bit of right-of-way that's not being used, uh, but I just can, unfortunately couldn't count those. But you all can certainly take that into consideration. And does this, do they have to upgrade the sidewalks or do they, are the sidewalks good? Uh, this one, I believe they've filed a sidewalk waiver with the committee I'm not sure the committee's heard that request yet, but. Uh, yeah, it was uh, approved. I'm oh, sorry, if, if you would just put, push the button and turn your mic on and state your name and address and then answer the question just to, for the record. 
Yes, my apologies. Uh, my name is James Carroll. I'm with uh, PAL Nashville. We are the architects of record. We are located at 904 Main Street, Suite A1. Um, and in response to that question, yes, we received, um, we are upgrading the sidewalks. The requirements call for a four foot planning strip and a 10 foot sidewalk. Um, and we requested a waiver to reduce the sidewalk width to six feet. It is currently about a two foot planning strip and a four foot sidewalk. So we are upgrading the sidewalk um, just slightly less than the required. But you'll have a four foot planning strip and then you just want a six foot sidewalk. Correct. Okay. And, and that's, that's, not, that's not, that's not before us, but it'll help us understand the mm -hmm. site plan. And Correct. you know, if, if we were, yeah, it'll just help us understand where the trade offs are that in, in your request for, in terms of parking and whatnot. And the uh, sidewalk waiver committee granted that request for an alternative design okay. uh, right. just this past week. So. All right, thank you. And then, Joey, does the retail, I guess we can ask them, but if, mm -hmm. if the retail space connects to the restaurant space, does it change? I mean, it. I, I'm thinking Cracker Barrel. And yeah. Does it all become one place, or is it? It, does it, it doesn't for us. No, we, we have, we have in Cracker Barrel situation, um, many times those sites are large enough that parking is not an issue. Right. But in, in places where the, it has been tight, we have deemed the, the store part of Cracker Barrel to be retail and the sit-down part being restaurant and uh, allotted parking accordingly. So right. you can, you can, we do do that often. And that is and, probably, I mean, having, I mean, I'm sure everybody at some point has probably been to a, a Cracker Barrel or maybe, but that's how people behave in it. I mean, they, the, the retail side is usually less crowded than the other unless people are waiting on the restaurant. They're not uh, waiting to shop necessarily. Yes, All right, good. All right, so if you would, uh, is that, I'm sorry, Joey said? Yeah, sure, that, that's actually all I have. I'll, I'll flip back to the site plan, uh, if that's the best best slide for the applicants here. Again, you guys will have five minutes to present, and it'll begin, and um, I didn't discuss it again. If the board has questions of you during this process, we stop the clock, so allow you to answer it. Um, so sometimes we get some folks that go, hey, they're, they're talking way more than five minutes, but that's kind of how we do that. So after you guys, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, again, my name is James Carroll, and this is Paul Jones with Powell Nashville, um, Architects of Record, and then this is Chip DeVere, owner of the property. Um, so the first variance we are requesting is, is the parking variance to have parking in the city right-of-way. Um, and really there we are just basically looking to reuse the existing parking lot as it is currently laid out. Um, inside that right-of-way we are uh, widening the sidewalk, upgrading the sidewalk there. Um, we are changing the direction of the parking. As you can see in some of the, the aerial views and existing photos, um, there's currently a curb cut on Illinois Avenue and 51st Avenue, um, and they both enter the property in different directions, and there's two different directions of one-way parking that both filter out onto 51st Avenue. So it's a little bit of a cluster in there. Um, the parking as is doesn't currently meet all of the drive aisle and parking width um, dimensions. So we are working to make that compliant with all the required dimensions. Um, we were also requested by Public Works to close off the Illinois curb cut as it was uh, within the required 50 feet away from the nearest intersection. So that is, uh, the result of that is the green space on the corner of the property. Um, so green space, we're using that as just kind of like an open, um, open green area with some some buyer attention to account for the storm water. Um, as you could see before, the the site was basically 100% asphalt. Um, so we are looking at you know introducing some green space into there to you know uh, improve the the aesthetic of the property. Um, and so we have the two parking spaces within the, the property line, the four along 51st Avenue. We also have two on Illinois um, further back that are compliant with the 50 foot curve cut and those are um, compact spaces pulling in off Illinois. So we are providing eight total spaces um, with the requirement being six. Um, and again, that is like Joey mentioned uh, with the restaurant classification and the retail classification. And uh, to your question, Chairman Taylor, the two uses have separate entrances. They are not connected internally. Um, so each one has a separate exterior entrance. So there isn't necessarily as much commingling as, say, a Cracker Barrel. Um, but in the, um, in the restaurant area, we have a full kitchen, um, 
kind of like a, a full a counter that extends a full space. Where um, and help help me understand the kitchen part because that that that's you know, and I, and I understand from your discussion your discussion today is different than the drawing. The drawing shows, tw not not in the kitchen but uh, on the green space it shows twelve picnic tables, which I don't know you know if it's buyer retention that it, it makes sense that there wouldn't be picnic tables there, but I, you know, uh, when I was looking for a parking variance, I saw 48 happy people out in the yard <laughs> and uh, having a good time. And, and, and it looks like, it, it, I think you all did a good job. It looks like it's gonna be a fun place, but it made me you know, ask two things. One is uh, with the upstairs patio, with the downstairs uh, booze and bar seating and with all those people in the yard, if they're in the yard, how is that tiny little kitchen going to make this primarily a restaurant and not a, a bar? So help me understand exactly what that kitchen is doing and what it's serving and, and how big it really is. Uh, because the, the drawing just shows a little space, but then it looks like there might be some more space back behind the, mm -hmm. the bar so wall. So essentially the kitchen um, extends the whole rear or left side of, of the building. Um, the previous use was a, a catering company, and they had, there's an existing hood in there, um, a 12 foot hood, and they had full equipment in there to produce uh, their catering. So we are keeping the hood, but introducing new kitchen equipment. Um, where, and where is that on the drawing? I see the bar with bar stools, and I see where it says kitchen slash back bar, and then there's a, looks like a, is that a sink? What's that thing that's got the hole in it, architect? Yes, plans. that is a sink. So the, if you're seeing the, the plan, that dash line is um, the hood. So the equipment is underneath of that hood, which is where not. Where it says two, the, where the circle is two A202, that's all hood? Potentially. I'm, this might be a different drawing. Right. I, I believe so, yeah. So it's going to have kind of a diner feel. Yeah, that, that's okay. the, the intention is more like an open kitchen diner. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking sitting at the bar like Old Hermitage Cafe or something. Exactly. All right, that makes that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. And what what do you plan to serve? Chip, do you want to speak? Yeah, uh, we're, currently we have a location on 8th I'm Avenue. I'm sorry, would you, did you state your name? No, address? Charles Devere, property owner, 5101 okay. Illinois Avenue. Okay. But our current location, we do pizzas, pretzels, hummus, a lot of small plates. Okay. So we're going to continue with that theme and probably do some more stuff. Okay. So I have a question about the storage area. If, if you can put the site plan up, Mr. Hargis. Uh, so what you've got is the storage area going all the way back to the to the alley, really. To and, and it takes up the whole. Well, it takes up a lot of the setback. Um, what 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 is that storage for? If it's a smaller, is that a big freezer or is that? what's going on there and, and a corollary to that is why does it that's a lot of storage you may need a lot I'm, I'm asking um, but that's a seems to be like a lot of storage what's the plan there so within that storage um, we have a walk-in cooler for the retail area so that extends into that space and then we also have a restroom in that area and then the resulting storage is around 500 square feet and that is uh, basically inventory for the retail area, um, which is something that is needed per the use of, of the, the retail floor. Um, and who's the restroom for? For staff. Yeah. And was that just required by codes to have an extra bathroom? Um, to have one restroom in there, yes. When you get a delivery, where will they park and offload? So the delivery will be in the main parking area. It, it will not be in the alley. Um, this floor plan that you may have shows a door off into the alley. We have relocated that door to the front side of the building. So deliveries will occur um, during closed business hours, and they will just pull in the parking lot and, and park there and load directly into the front of the storage addition. So uh, another question. What, it look, from the pictures I can see, it, what's the... Um, residential character around it are there any homes around it because it looks to me like you're going to end up having some street parking we're going to have to utilize some other than just the right of ways you're having built in yes yeah, so any? um excuse me 
the properties behind our property are residential. Um, so 51st all along there is basically all commercial. Um, across the street is, is commercial, but um, <coughs> not re restaurant, it's more retail. Um, so is that on street parking in those residential areas there? Is it yes, and most of the neighborhood is that way. Um, there are, are no ma major parking lots for the most part. Um, there is a lot of street parking. Um, I, I there, think there's street parking on 51st Avenue as well, um, just on, on the opposite side as we have the two bike lanes on our side. I think I heard Joey mention this, but um, is the, the parcel immediately behind you that is commercial, right? That's CS. Yes, sir. It is. Okay. It's on CS also. Okay. Thanks. Can you put the other And as one of the, we, with our addition for the storage to extend out to the property line, uh, the property behind ours has a building basically in line with that. If you can see on the bottom left there, that gray box. Um, which is an accessory dwelling unit, but it is something in that line that is there. There is a structure there. On the current existing site, there is a CMU wall that extends the entire uh, depth of the property as well um, with a, a fenced-in area. So we're, we're essentially enclosing that with, with the storage addition. Is your council parking away down there? Yeah, she has. Mary yes. Carolyn, there's a letter that... Yes, we met with the um, Nation's Neighborhood Planning and Zoning Committee as well and with uh, Council Member Mary Carolyn Roberts to discuss this um, and have gained their approval. Members, I apologize. I left the zoning layer off the PowerPoint, but that, that adjoining parcel is CS also, um, with the next one down being R6. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Anything else to add? I did have a question. Okay, I just sorry. wanted to be sure I understood right. Are you still working through the drive aisle width, or is that also before us? Um, no, we are not. That is that is compliant as yeah. is. Yeah, compliant we're in good shape on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Anything just else to add? The, I do have a question. Um, just seeing the, the bike lane, uh, you, you mentioned right by it. Is there any plans to have like any bicycle like parking on the site? That um, it is something we discussed, and we can definitely include. Uh, the neighborhood is very walkable. Yeah. With a lot of uh, people walking babies and strollers. A lot of people riding bikes. So we have definitely discussed that, and can be something we include. Okay, thanks. Uh, I would like to add something to that. That's something I'm most excited about is just the walkability of the neighborhood. If you've been to our current location on 8th Avenue, you know that that parking in that street alone. You is, guys have, have, have picked some really fun uh, parking It's a nightmare over there. So, <laughs> like, I cannot, this, like, excites me to, yeah. just to have a neighborhood with sidewalks. So, I'm super excited about that. Okay, thanks. Any other, any other questions? Anything else? I think that's all we have. Thank all you. All right. We'll close the public hearing. Um, well, I can support the variance request because it is a narrow site. Um, they are repurposing an existing building. Um, they're only adding storage. That's what the addition is with you know, the restroom. Um, and that is adjacent to commercially zoned districts, and there's an alley that separates um, as well. Um, they are providing the required parking except the four spaces are in the right-of-way, but they're making improvements to the right-of-way and making improvements to the property. So I could support the, the variance request. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 I agree. The only, um, I, I do like the, you know, if they have a, you know, have a bike rack of some sort, I think that they're going to do that. I don't know if I would, we could put it in as a condition. The only uh, condition that uh, I can think of is that, um, because it has 2,000 square foot of retail space, which triggers the six sidewalk requirement, of course they have eight, I don't have an issue at all with the site plan. I think the site plan is really thoughtful and it, and it looks like it's gonna be a cool spot. Um, but should, should I would like to condition the, the variance on the project as proposed and should uh, the restaurant slash, you know, uh, tap room space 
ever expand into the retail space that it would trigger uh, a parking ask again. I mean, because it, they're getting what they want because of the, of the proposal that they're submitting, which I think is great, but I also don't want to, you know, all of a sudden the, the storeroom and everything else, all of a sudden it's a big giant restaurant with eight parking spots. And, and, and the board may think that's, the next board may think that's perfectly fine. They may come with the appropriate hardship, but I, I kind of think they should make their case if the use changes. Uh, did, if, if the use, if you consider that retail and they expanded it to restaurant, would that be considered a change in use? Yes, sir, it would be. And that would trigger that anyway? It would. Okay, so then, so that, that does, that's a, something that's already included. Okay, yes, so that, that, that would be my only concern. And, and again, they might have a strong case for it, but I think they should make it, uh, and it sounds like they will have to, so I don't have any issue with the, the proposal. Anybody else? Christina, you sound like you had a lot of the information to make a really good motion. Sure. <laughs> um, I will move to approve um, the variance request for the rear setback and parking requirements um, due to the hardship of the narrow site. I'll second. Have a motion, have a second. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, say aye, raise your hand. Anybody opposed? That motion passes two, four, five to two. And we wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna go on to the last case. It is one that is a little close to my business, and so I'm going to, out of the abundance of caution, recuse myself from that case and turn it over to our vice chair, Mr. Pepper. Okay, so that was the last case. That was my last there. case, okay. and Ms. David, thank you so much for bringing sweets. I look forward to having my brownie and, and drinks. I really appreciate it. So good luck, and... Mr. Taylor, now that you are a civilian, you're welcome to have a seat in the audience and you can watch the case if you'd like to, but you're also, uh, you feel free, uh, with, with your, with your over 10 years of service, you have the right to do whatever you wish, sir. So, but we thank you again. Um, well, if, if y'all do ever see me in the audience, please, uh, have an intervention ASAP. <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody. Thank you again, David. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, our next case before us, case and final case of today's agenda, is case 2022-23. Gerald Andrade, the appellant and owner of the property, is located at 208 A and B McMillan Street, requesting a variance from the parking requirements in MUL-A. The appellant uh, is constructing multifamily units. Referred to the board under section 1740. Uh, uh, 180 item B. I know the appellants are present. Uh, opposition is present as well. So uh, each each side will have 10 minutes to present their case to this board. I'll go through the presentation first and explain the thing. Uh, the opposition has given me some information I'm going to pass out to you at the end of my presentation um, here and give a copy to the applicant as well. But the uh, subject property is my highlighter seems to be missing. Uh, it is these these four units, townhome units that are located here on my on my site plan. Uh, a view of the subject property, aerial photographs, and site plan. I'll, I'll leave this up here and have a little explanation. So that this this case comes before you uh, based off a uh, complaint the coast department received in. Uh, the applicant came in and submitted for permits for these four units. The site plan was submitted as shown here in the upper, uh, on the left-hand side of the photograph, uh, and depicting two on-street parking spaces at the time. Now, uh, civil engineers submitted these plans, um, and, and for our review, uh, unbeknownst to us, this uh, McMillan Street is actually uh, signed by Public Works to be no parking. So these spaces uh, should not have been shown on the site plan. Uh, the, the engineers submitted it, our zoning examiners reviewed it and approved it, Permits were issued, construction followed. Uh, here they are at the, the end of the process to obtain UNOs and it's discovered these spaces are not valid and we can't count them. Uh, at the time of the issuance of the permit, uh, the zoning code would have required six spaces uh, with a 10% reduction due to uh, uh, bus routes located within 660 feet. Uh, so that's where we get down to five spaces required. Uh, the only ones I can count are these four in the uh, garages which are located uh, under the back two units 
Um, I cannot count any kind of stacked parking in this driveway behind that, although physically there is enough room for cars there. The zoning code does not permit multifamily uses to have uh, tandem parking or stacked parking one behind another uh, like you can do in single family situations. So unfortunately, although there is physically room there, this the zoning code prohibits that. So the variance request is one parking space. With that. This is uh, looking at the subject property on my visit out there to McMillan Street. As you can tell, these, these, uh, these units are constructed. The Coast Department, upon uh, investigation of the complaint, we held the UNO for the front two units that are here and released the UNOs for the rear units uh, that are back here. Uh, these are views looking south toward Church Street uh, in the upper left photograph and uh, then north on Church Street of adjoining properties on, on that side of the road and then a uh, view again on that side of the road. Uh, you may be able to see right there uh, a sign, no parking sign posted by Public Works all along McMillan on both sides of the road. Mr. Hargis, did, did Public Works provide any commentary on why there's no parking signs along there? They did not, no, sir. Okay. Um, nothing of that. that. From my understanding, that that no parking has been out there for, for a little bit of time, maybe uh, several years. Uh, I don't know. The civil engineers just didn't pick it up, maybe on a site visit as part of their plans. Uh, our office, we, we did not catch it. We typically don't make site visits pre-construction to verify site conditions, so we missed it as well. Yes, sir, it was. Correct. Correct. Yes, sir. Uh, and in our office, um, you know, relied upon that and, and, and based upon, but, you know, discovered very far down construction, as you can see, uh, that, that, hey, there's no parking here, so they're short parking. Uh, we immediately made that determination, notified the applicant. Uh, the applicants came forward and, and presented their uh, uh, appeal to this board. So I will leave that photograph up. Um, sir, miss, you'll have uh, 10 minutes to present your case um, to this board. You may want to save a portion of your of your case for rebuttal. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you and we'll start the clock. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and uh, members of the board. I'm Sarah Ferraro. I am an attorney at Thompson Burton. It's at 1801 West End Avenue, Suite 1550 here in Nashville. I represent the property owner and applicant, Mr. Jerry Andrade. He is sitting to my right, your left. Um, we're re requesting a variance of one parking spot. I'll get to the facts here in just a minute, but um, this is a bit of a unique case, as you've heard from Mr. Hargis, in that this parking space kind of slipped through the cracks at all stages of development. And you've seen the photos, the property is built. Um, and this just went over the heads of, of several design professionals that Mr. Andrade relied on in constructing this property. So that's what created the hardship that brought us here before you all today. And you're so familiar I, with- me, Ms. Farrar, can I ask you a question before I, it escapes me? Please. Because I, I, I get what's going on here, but and, and this goes to your hardship, is what what is, I mean, looking at this, I'm assuming you'd have to do some teardown or substantial reconstruction. T talk to me about that. I mean, is there a way to put another parking place in there at this point? Or it doesn't look to me like there is, but that's what I want to uh, know No, more sir. About. I, I mean, you've hit the nail on the head. That is um, the nature of the hardship, right? These are built pursuant to the plans that the engineer, at, Mr. Andrade, hired a well-respected local engineering firm that prepared the plans and made the uh, parking calculation determination and uh, relied on that in preparing the plans, then the architect uh, made, made the designs in reliance on that, and then Metro approved the permit, subject to it being a correct parking calculation. Of course, we now know it wasn't, um, but now we're here with this hardship that, you know, Mr. Andrade didn't create, but uh, has taken steps to try to remedy before coming to you all. And, and what were those steps? That is a great segue. Thank you, Mr. Pepper. And, and I'll turn it over it to my look client. It not like there's anything that once it was built, it seems to me like this was discovered when you went to get your O&U permit and everything was built. So sure. I, I can't think. Yeah, and there could have been. Could take, but you can. 
maybe shared parking arrangements. Those were the kind of things that Mr. Andrade uh, pursued, um, but were unsuccessful. Spoiler alert, <laughs> I kind of took your punchline, but, but he'll explain kind of what that process looked like. Members of the board, my name is Jerry Andrade from 754 Benton Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. So to directly answer your question, Mr. Prepper, uh, upon meeting with Mr. Hargis and my builder, I was advised to secure parking by uh, looking at additional locations within 200 feet and uh, attempting to secure parking on a perpetual lease or a 99-year lease. I did make those calls to adjacent property owners um, and was unable to do so. I, I contacted the property owners and requested uh, one parking spot. Unfortunately, a uh, case dating back a couple years ago, uh, another uh, builder who requested a variance uh, also came up against a hardship and has secured a lot of parking in that area. I was unable to find any parking spots. Um, I investigated options for potentially putting a sort of rising uh, structure that would allow us to raise a car that that ended up not panning out as well. So as far as I know, those are the only, we also explored the pedestrian d uh, reduction and, and that's not an option either. Okay, thank you. There are four units. Okay, so there's five parking spaces for units. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And I'll add to that, we talked about the no parking signs a little earlier during Mr. Hargis's presentation. Um, through counsel, Mr. Andr Andrade sought to have those parking signs removed through NDOT. NDOT denied that request. So that was another step taken to try to remedy this um, before seeking a variance. So. You know, typically this variance, um, what is required to show an undue hardship is tied to some feature of the land, um, but that's not always the case. It's uh, TCA 137207 provides that other exceptional and extraordinary situations, that's kind of the term of art they use, can also constitute an undue hardship. I would submit to the board that's exactly what we have here. It went over the head of several well-respected design professionals um, upon whom Mr. Andrade relied to calculate the parking and prepare the plans. And unfortunately, they were off by one spot and didn't come to our attention until uh, construction was almost complete. So that's why we're here before you all today, respectfully requesting a one-spot variance. Um, with Mr. Hargis's permission, I'll reserve the remainder of my time for rebuttal, but for now, happy to answer any other questions you all have. Are the the spots that we're seeing on, on the screen here, um, are those, I know they're undercover, are they inside of a garage or is it carport or kind of what? They're inside a garage. Those okay. are two, two car garages there. So, so I guess hypothetically, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about these front two units that don't have a garage then, they really don't have any parking unless you go behind the garage of the other units is that correct That's and are all these units are they owned together are they are they you know as a, i guess are they are the intention to you know disperse them separately or, to, or no they're owned together they're all owned by me and my intention is is not to sell them individually okay thanks and i think that um mr newton where you're where you're going with this is you know, what, where are those people going to park in those units? Well, the intention is going to be to use these as short-term rentals. And, and that's significant because, you know, when people come to Nashville and rent these, they're usually not driving their car, right? They find a BNA and they get a ride share. And then these are so close to downtown that the activities people are going to be going to, the restaurants, the shopping, the concerts, they're either walking, maybe they're taking a scooter, or maybe they're ride sharing most of the time. So that's why we anticipate the parking not being a problem as to those other units. There's some signs that I'm looking at on the photograph that I was handed today. And how long have those no parking signs been there? Uh, I, I'm not sure what. I'm not sure what uh, what photograph it is, unfortunately, but um, be more than willing to show it. To here we go. Us. Yeah. So the sign that's that, that I'm seeing here, that's in front of the unit, um, I, I can't tell you how long that's been there. And the second sign there, I, I can't tell you how long that's been there either. To be honest with you, uh, they were just missed. It, it was not it was not something that I was aware of. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying you did anything whatsoever. I'm just. I think they've been there for years, though. I, I would say probably 10, 15, 20 years. What's surprising to me is just down the road, parking is permitted on the street, 
Uh, we tried to submit that to NDOT as, as, as she said, but that was, that was declined. Okay. And so, if I may, I have not seen these before today, so I'll, I'll well, take... Well, if you want to take a moment and look at them, I mean, it's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, they're, they've got a little, a little age on them, like most of the signs in the Metro. Mm -hmm. Which I guess the, the question that comes about, how did the engineer miss this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you ask the engineer about that and... and yeah, so I... Do you, do you want me to respond? Sure. Yeah, so um, part, of, part of the issue is also that from the architecture and the engineering standpoint, the uh, bus reduction discount was given and the pedestrian discount was given. And I was advised, okay, well, you've already got six spaces. You've got four spaces there plus the reduction for the bus and the, the, the pedestrian sidewalk variance. Turns out the, the pedestrian doesn't apply because it only applies to commercial establishments, and there was another mistake made there as well. At this point, I've thoroughly researched this to every extent that I can, and I, I think that it was just overlooked by multiple professionals. I had two builders on this over the course of the last three years. I've had two architects on this. I've had one civil engineering firm, and I can honestly tell you that the only person who shouldn't have caught that error is me. I'm a software developer engineer by training, so that's the nature of my hardship. I can actually speak to this. Um, the <laughs> I have a project in this area, and the, there was a bus route at one time, and then the bus route has been changed. And so I wouldn't necessarily say that design professional missed something. There's just been a change in the evolution of the growth of Nashville. So I wouldn't, wouldn't really t blame it on the design professional. Things have changed. It takes a long time to get permits. So I just wanted to address your Question. I wasn't trying to harsh on architects or engineers too much. That's, that's what I that's what I was hearing. That, that, yeah. that was, Nor is that our intention I, I for the record. <laughs> also, just, I didn't think it was all, you. All professionals make mistakes. I totally get that. Yeah, I didn't oh. think it was you doing right. that. Also, to clarify, we did go to Mr. Hargis, and and as you mentioned, we used Google Maps to show historically that there was a bus route available at that particular time, and he was gracious enough to acknowledge that and and reduce the parking requirement accordingly. I have had that exact same conversation, so I understand. <laughs> I, I just wouldn't say it's, it's just everything's evolving, things change, and I just would, you got three architects on the board, so. <laughs> Absolutely, just context for um, what brought us here today, but you know, doesn't matter who, who missed it, um, you know, this is just the, the place we're in today, and um, I think that the point we're trying to make is that you know, we want property owners who are not experts to be able to rely on that without fear that they will be prejudiced by um, something that may be missed for good reason. Any more questions for the applicant? Okay, well, uh, you have some time left on rebuttal, I believe. We'll hear from the, any opposition. Thank you. You do. You have uh, six minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Okay, we'll hear from those Man, parties opposed. Opposition. I can hear you okay now, but if you'll turn that, uh, if you'll hit the button that makes the microphone turn red, then we'll be able to hear you better. And if we can't, we'll let you know and you can take okay. the mask off. Okay, it is red now. How's that? Uh, that sounds fine to me so far. Does it sound, can everybody else hear? Okay, my name is Ann Braun. I own a business at 203 McMillan Street and I own the parking lot at 206 McMillan Street, which is immediately adjacent to this construction project. And when you say adjacent, do you mean next door? Literally next door, yes. Yeah. See your cursor? Those are my employees' vehicles right there. Okay, 30, okay. Okay, yeah. yes. So I can tell you that the signs have definitely been on this street since I purchased the property in 2008. Uh, they have always been present, and in the pictures that I provided for you, you can see that there are presently, I took those pictures yesterday, there are presently two signs that are pretty clearly posted already. However, there used to be another no parking sign directly in front of that project that the construction crew removed not just once, but twice. 
Now, Mr. Andrade said he's relying on various and sundry uh, professionals to advise him, but the one constant through all of this has been Mr. Andrade himself. Um, he is fully cognizant of the very real parking problems in this neighborhood. There is no legal parking in front of the project on either side of the street. There's maybe half a dozen legal parking spots on the entire block. There's more legal parking on the adjacent block, but not a whole lot of it. There's no parking spots for those front two units for people to do things like unload groceries or luggage. They'd have to walk a considerable distance. It's almost inevitable I will have people trespass in my parking lot. And in fact, during this construction project, it was constant with their workers, their delivery people, whatever. They were constantly trespassing in my parking lot. All that I asked was that they communicate with me, try to ask me first. Things happen if there's an oops, talk to me. None of that ever happened. I finally had to put up a fence. I had to spend thousands of dollars on a fence. And then only then did they ask permission, which we always granted because we're reasonable people. Um, unfortunately, it has been the pattern of behavior throughout that Mr. Andrade does what he wishes or his employees do whatever they want. And then they just, you know, they do whatever they want. We deal with the consequences and whatever. Um, so I really don't think that this is a matter of oops. I think that the appellant deliberately painted himself into this corner because he was trying to maximize his monetization opportunity. Monetization so is his own what, term. What, his plan before building this was to rent parking okay, to so Deja Vu. Other than what evidence do you have of that? What do you evidence, evidence do you have that, he, that it wasn't a mistake that he he relied on other people? And we have a member of this board who said things are are fluid in Nashville right now. I mean, what what evidence? The do you physical have? presence of the signs. I mean, they're there. Okay, they're physically there. They're, 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 they've been there for years. He acknowledged that they'd been there for years. He knows. And again, he is a very intelligent man. I believe that to be the case since he is a CEO of a software company. Ma'am. Um, ma he knows. Ma'am, you, you mentioned that, I'm over here. Oh, <laughs> uh, you mentioned that there are, um, You've been in this on the street for quite a while. Yes. Can can you do you and you may not be able to answer this, but can you speak to do you have any kind of idea why these no parking signs are necessary in the first place? Is it a narrow street? Yes. Is um, there you know Okay, well I have to admit with regard to the ones that are on that side of the street, I think well, you'd have to ask public right, works, right, but yeah. I think w when cars park there illegally, it becomes a real problem for traffic maneuvering around the street and getting around the corner to get onto state. Okay. Um, so, you know, I've witnessed a lot of traffic problems right there, but then on the other side of the building, you've got the, the medical billing company, the uh, Fit Factory, and well, us, we have existing parking spots of our own that, as you can see, are perpendicular to the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are people backing out of those. So that's that's what's going on on that side of the street. Okay. All right. Thank you. So my question is, is how can anyone lay claim to public parking as part of a parking resource that they're supposed to provide for a construction project? Well, why is that okay? I mean, I'm not entitled to the parking spots next to my building. Why is that okay to use those as part of the parking he's supposed to provide? He well, could have chosen not, to provide other parking. We're not really, we're not here to answer policy decisions. No, that are made I, by I don't the know. I'm curious. That's not what we do. do you have any, because what, I mean, do, what, what belief do you have that they have four parking spaces, they're yes. supposed to have five. Yes. What, what is your concern about them being one parking place short? My concern is that this, and again, this, 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 this individual has displayed a pattern of behavior. You can look at the many, many codes complaints, over 100 made against him over the years, and that would take you a long time, but I mean, it's a pattern. He does what he wants, and then 
he asks for per forgiveness later or frankly doesn't bother to ask for forgiveness. So what kind of message would this send to developers all over? Oh, build what you want. Metro will just approve it anyway. I mean, it isn't just about one parking spot. It's about the rules and how I had to abide them when I renovated my building. And everybody else in the neighborhood has parking available for their businesses. Why should we be forced to absorb the price of his folly? He made deliberate decisions to get into this. And so I'm, I'm, we're trying to figure out what would, the, what, what would that price be if it's just one parking place short? Well, it won't just be one parking place. So the point about vacation rentals, oh, actually, ma ma I, yeah, sh 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 I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, we, I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at here. We are looking at a variance for one parking space, and that's the only thing that we're looking at. Right. Yeah. Why is it necessary? Right. Why Why didn't he plan better and provide more parking for his project? Why didn't he have the building designed to provide adequate parking as required when his project was approved? Why? Okay. Thank you. Why? I, you know, he made that decision. So that's what I don't understand, and that's why I'm here today. And I'm not just representing myself. It's the other neighbors here who tried to contact you, and unfortunately we got the written notice in the mail with the deadline of the email after the email deadline had passed. So I, that's why I brought an email from Precision Auto House. And also I'm, I do have a copy of an email that was sent to Mr. Taylor, which unfortunately he's not here. Um, by Linda Schipani and, and Matthew Schipani, and they are in agreement that this is a pattern of behavior. Do what you want and then ask for forgiveness later, and it's just not right. And, and furthermore, these units will have the capacity for up to 12 vacation rental guests apiece for a total of 48. And it is true that a lot of people fly there in Nashville, but a lot of people drive to Nashville, and when they get here, they have to park somewhere. So 12 adults possibly in each building, that could be dozens of cars in the neighborhood. So there you go. It's not really just about one parking spot. I know you're doing the best you can with the laws you have. I'm just expressing sure, my that's consternation that's over the situation. It's called frustration, I think. So. Yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, frustration. That's a better shun word. All right, uh, can I answer anything for you? Any questions from the opposition? Well, if, if you could, um, again, I'm going to ask the same question as I asked the previous folks, and I'm going to ask you to refrain from more of what the applicant may have done in the past or not done in the past because we don't have that information, and it's none frankly it's not effective as to this particular project but how are you damaged by one additional spot specifically i, I am okay. just you just you just me just okay you. I'm, so you're, here's you're the only gonna, one here and you're gotcha. not testifying and representing here's what's going to happen so guests will try to check in to the front two units they will either park illegally or realizing there is no legal parking, they will almost inevitably park in my parking lot. But um, you have a fence, so. I do have a fence, and, but and now I'm they, going to have to deal with. Well, ma'am, let of, me ask some yeah, questions. Yeah, all of that. Ma'am, let me ask yes. the questions, okay? Sorry. I don't want the, the, the jumping out there. And I haven't made a decision which way I'm going, so you'll know. I'm just trying to get some facts here. Thank you, so I appreciate they, that. They, they park in your spot, so you have the friendly record service pick the car up and take it away. Yes. Is that a problem? It is because often tow trucks take a long time to come, and then I don't have parking available for my own employees, my, now my you're customers, a bit more my deliveries. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm not trying to get you to go out in multiple paragraphs here. I'm on a zero shorter more succinct answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what you're saying is they may be having an adverse impact on your ability to conduct business because they're going to park in your employees' parking places. Yes. Okay. That's, that's where you. we want to get to. Have they negotiated or attempted to negotiate with you to utilize any of your parking places? 
Yes, and actually, I wish I could take him up on that, because sure, it would be nice to have some additional income. Okay. However, so, I need my parking, and I can't commit to 99 years or anything like that. Okay, and, but, but you've had some preliminary discussions, hasn't gone very far, and you don't know whether or not those discussions would be for one, two, three, four spots or anything like that. He asked me specifically to rent two. Two. Okay. Excellent. Um, okay. I'm good. Thank you. Just for, for context, what's the nature of your business? Uh, we do low voltage system installations for businesses, most notably drive through communications. Um, and we've been doing a lot of flexible scheduling lately and anticipate to do more, which is why I, one reason why I can't consider even parking over the weekend. But, but there are many other reasons. Again, I really can't do any kind of realistic long-term commitment. Um, again, the income would be nice, but I really can't do it. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question? Sure, absolutely. Okay. You testified this. You said for at least since you've been there, the signs have been up there, uh, the no parking signs. They're yes. still up there today. Yes. So at least from 2008 until now, which is yes. my math here, <laughs> a long time. 14 years. 14 years. Those signs have been there, and it's just sort of overlooked by whoever was building it for them. Uh, the, whoever was to building the best it of for your... them took the signs down twice. There was a sign directly in front of 208 McMillan that they took down not just once, but twice during the construction process. You say they, but you don't have any first-hand knowledge yourself. I, I saw the sign was there, then I saw the sign was gone, then I saw the sign was lying parallel to their building. Actually, it may have been sitting on my property because I saw it when I was going out to my car one night and I took a picture of it. Okay. You understand that, that I've got this horrible profession called lawyer. <laughs> which is what I am, which means I don't have any common sense. I just look for facts, ma'am. These are the uh, facts, sir. Dragnet at its best. <laughs> you didn't see anybody take the sign down, personally, you yourself. Personally, not. Okay, good, good, good. So far, we're where we're, 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 we're want to be. Okay. But you did see it come down? Yes. Excellent. Thank well, you. Well, it was in concrete. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, ma'am. If you have nothing else, okay. thank you for your time. Mr. Chairman, can I ask my one question of the applicant? Ask and then I'll be you want. just there one. There is no limit. Well, I only want the one question. Famous last words, huh? Yeah. One question. <laughs> there is no limit, so you can ask all you want, Mr. Walden. Did you go out there and pull the damn sign down? No, sir. Thank you. So, and I have a question, too. So what, what could you do to um, ensure these are going to be short-term rentals? What, what can you do to, other than having rented a few, a few times, I, I'm not in the business. What, what could you do to ensure that everybody that comes there knows that there are only four spaces? And, and what are you going to do? I, I, or can you assign one to each space and make sure that everybody that goes in that unit knows you can't, this is your only, this is the only place you can park so you don't have a situation where somebody rents a unit that has two cars and then they're parking in two of the places, and then somebody's parking next door at this nice lady's place or somebody else's. Is there what? What can you do about that? I, I can make sure that my short-term applicants who are coming for those properties, if there are more, there won't be more than four cars. And I'll tell you very briefly why. Because if someone parks in her lot, I hear about it, and I should, right? I don't have a problem with Miss Braun, but I hear about it. I hear about it through phone. I hear about it through text and we have to try to resolve the situation. I don't want that. I don't want that for her. I don't want that for me. So I'm telling you now, if I contact and find out we've got more than four cars coming, I'm just going to turn that down. These okay, are probably so the you, closest. You could, you, could, you could make 
when, when people rent Airbnb, as I recall, you sign an agreement of some type. Can you make a condition of the agreement that they understand and agree that if they're renting Unit A that, you know, they only have access to this one parking, whatever it is, Unit A's parking space? Can you do that? I can, but uh, if Ms. Braun were able to, she, she would say, well, someone else could show up and park there. Um, but I will definitely say restriction is one car per unit, or if they're being rented together, two cars per, per those two units. And, and I would just add to that, you know, the opponent has spoken to her fear about this interfering with her business, which we certainly do not want to do. We take that seriously. Um, you know, she wants to run her business well. You know, Mr. Andrade is um, trying to create a, a short-term rental business out of this property, and in order for that to be effective, he needs to make sure that his renters um, don't have issues with parking too, right? So it's also in his best interest to operate this property um, if there are going to be no parking issues going forward. So I think that, you know, we can represent to the board that he will um, – make his best efforts to make sure that there are no issues. The going fastest forward. way to a one-star review. What, what can you do that's more specific than that? What, what can you do that's more than specific in your best efforts? Can you agree that everybody that rents will be notified that there's only one parking place per unit? I will agree to that. On top of that, I'll say as we send out notifications, we will specifically say, as we did with construction, she mentions the fence came up and it stopped. It also stopped just because she started booting people, right? And as... Mr. Lawless pointed out, once there are consequences for inappropriate actions, I don't oversee every one of those individual subcontractors, people stop parking there. And that's, it wasn't the fence, it was that there are consequences for the actions. So I will tell every person on our notifications, do not park in this lot, you will face consequences, you will get booted. Because if they don't have that notification from me, once they park there, they're going to boot it, and then we'll get a one-star review because no one wants to start their vacation out like that. And, Mr. Pepper, those notifications are um, communications that renters look for because they often contain information like how to access the building, right, if there's a door right. code or where the key is going to be. So, um, so in it, that, and I, I've gotten those before. It okay. gives you the key. So you can put something in there that says you only have one parking space for your unit. Yes, okay. absolutely. My okay. preference would be that nobody parks there. Just Any further questions? Yeah, I just wanted to get some clarification. Um, what I think I heard is that you were, during the design, reliant on the pedestrian and the transit reductions, correct? Is that what I heard? And those went away during the course, because like we talked about, things changed in Nashville. Okay. And that's why five are required now instead of the four. Is that correct? Yeah. That, so we did get credit for the bus reduction. But yeah. on my original plans, mm -hmm. it said six are required. Mm -hmm. You've got six, including those two spaces out in front. So we did count those spaces in front. Okay. So that was part of yes. your... That was part of it. But the architect had said, to me, it doesn't matter. Regardless, you'll still get the deduction from the pedestrian. You'll still get the mm -hmm. bus transit. So even if those didn't count, you'd still be at four. But mm -hmm. we ended up in, in this particular situation. Okay. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank we'll you. The, Thank close you. Close the public hearing and begin deliberation. Well, it's very significant to me that, that the uh, only, I, I mean, I don't see any remedy here, but either tearing the structure down or making some kind of major remodel um, that, I mean, if we were talking about them only having done this and there being one or two parking spaces, maybe something that extreme would be something we should consider. I, I'm also just, I do, I believe from what I've heard that it was, and, and based on what you're saying, that something happened. I mean, no no professional would want to put themselves in a situation where, purposely, uh, where their client is up here having to say, I, we're one parking place short. So I, I don't feel like that 
I understand the, the opposition's frustration and, and living next to construction for a while is enough to drive you crazy because we've all probably done it at some point and, and I hopefully it will calm down now that the construction's through um, but I do I mean we do have the ability if it's an extraordinary exceptional situation or condition to grant a variance um, it seems like to me it is but uh, what is every what what does everybody else have to say? Well, I think it's pretty safe to say if someone parks in the next door neighbor's parking lot, they're going to get booted, which doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for domestic tranquility in this part of town. So I may steer clear for a while, but there's no other option available without I mean we, we, we've kind of got an oops and we've got changing environments um, and while I understand the frustration of the neighbor we're here for exactly what's come before us on this one I mean I, I'm I'm going to let one of the smart architects come up with the motion when they finally do but this is Unless you are, Ashanti, I'm, I'm, I'm not a smart architect. Okay. Get ready to get. No, before the motion, though, I, I would like to say that, like, I would feel more comfortable with conditions that say that there's only going to be four. Because, like, I definitely feel sympathy for the applicant, but I also feel sympathy for the neighbor. Because one thing that she said that is true, if you, I mean, most people, when they do due diligence on a property, you look at the surrounding neighborhood. And if she bought her property in 2008, and that sign was there, and that sign's not very far from the property. Like, when I buy property, I walk around the neighborhood. I see what's, like, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that they had noticed. I don't think it's his fault. I, I definitely don't think it's his fault. I think there was a mistake made. So I'm not saying he should be penalized for that. But I also understand that they presumed that they had a certain, they were in a certain landscape. He thought he would have enough for six. He built it, and then it turns out he didn't, and somebody missed it, and then it wasn't on him. And so... I, but I'm also sympathetic. I, I'm familiar with that area. That area is tight. Like, that's a very tight area. And as well-intentioned as people are who use Airbnbs, you know, sometimes people have parties. Like, we've all heard, like, I've never been very lenient on parking requirements because no matter, the, even when you have enough parking, it's never enough parking just based off of how reliant we are on our cars. So in this circumstance, Mr. Pepper, in your wisdom, I do agree with you. I do think it's extraordinary. We should try to carve up carve out an exception, but whatever motion is made, I just prefer that there be some conditions. So um, what, what do you have in mind for a condition? Just that, th just that the four spaces, like, that's four cars, that's it. Like, there won't be, like, he, our conditions are, like, no more than the four cars. So would that be that he puts the notice that when they, when someone rents one of the units, they agree that like in the I, I rental agreement saying, or on the advertisement or something like that, like right. when he advertises it, that it's clear that it's a one car per unit sort of situation. I'm sorry, Mr. Lawless has something better. Well, uh, Joey, could you put back up the street view again or the one with the parking lots around there? Because I think if we just have four cars or that they have designated spots if they're able to rent them from one of the adjoining property owners or something like that. Say that again, Mr. In Walters. other words, and, and as soon as our wonderful director gets it up here, thank you. Oh, hello. Like 30, like that little box that's got 34 or, again, Ms. Braun's 37, one of those places that if they have leased spaces for a unit that that would also either designate one of the four spots they've got or the off-site if they're able to rent one. And I'm sure that he's going to try to pull something like that off if he finds he has a hard time renting. I want to give that option so he doesn't have to come back to us, with all due respect. Uh, so it would be either designate them or secure off-site parking through whatever means he can do. So no, notify the whoever's renting one renting of the units it. that they have one parking one spot. space un unless and until he is able to secure right. 
additional parking that he can ensure that they have essentially yeah that if somebody wants it at the point he secures an off-site parking lot uh, space it needs to be designated then then every then each unit only has one parking space yeah okay yeah. mr lawless Do one one assistance for you on that if he produces let's say subsequent to this yeah. he, he produces a, a perpetual lease for one space We'll need to review that. I mean, it essentially nullifies the need for a variance in this case. So, I mean, if, he, if he's able to produce that, uh, it'll clear up, obviously clear up any any so future. It, it wouldn't It wouldn't need to, no, sir. Unless he added on, you know, or yeah, yeah. some change of so use occurs. Of one, so. Correct. So, so it sounds like if we, the best we can probably do, Mr. Argus, is to say that, that if the applicant has to agree to, to notify all renters of the units that they only have one parking space. Yes, yes, that would it's probably about the best. Yes, sure. okay. or, or the parking restrictions, because I mean, I think they, they noted that they could be, uh, you know, rented together or separately or I, I think, I, I don't know if we need to say necessarily one per, we need they need to notify one person per, uh, unit, but uh, notify them of the parking restrictions of the property and the surrounding properties, just to make sure they know they like, don't park in these places. Um, ahead of time. I think he could do that too. I mean, I'll just yeah. be notifying them that don't park in any other private parking areas, right? Mm -hmm. Something to that effect. Yeah, or and and so also so they know that the streets. I mean, again, they should see the signs, just like maybe. Other people should have seen the signs, uh, but notify that. Is that? So, do you want to start over and say I move that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I move that we um, approve the variance request due to the um, a hardship of changing conditions and uh, uh, and unusual circumstances, um, but with the condition that um, the applicant uh, notify any potential um, renters um, of the parking requirements and where parking is prohibited in and around the property. I okay, there's a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All, the questions. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand and say aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Six to zero. Yes, sir. And with that, the uh, board of zoning appeals is adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.